of the speakers made this statement. He said, the greatest moment in my life was not being baptized in Jesus' name. One of the greatest moments in my life was not being filled with the Holy Ghost. So I'm kind of sitting there and I'm thinking, okay, man, well, you know, we got, well, most of us, we testify the greatest moment of our life is when we were baptized and filled with the Spirit. He said, the greatest moment of my life was when God led me to this church and these God-fearing people. And when he said that, I mean, it just done something in me. And my wife told me, she said, you know, we got people in this church who have that same kind of testimony that they love this church and they're thankful that God led them here to this place. Not that thankful to have people who feel that way about the church. Amen. I want to go to the book of Exodus chapter 14 and verse 13 this morning. Exodus chapter 14 and verse 13. Yes. 
morning. God is happy this morning. And I, that may, that I kind of feel like that's an uphill battle for me to declare that this morning. It's not like there's a little resistance to the sure God is happy. Can I tell you that the Bible says that the joy of the Lord is our strength? The Bible says that one of the fruit of the Spirit is joy. That means that joy is in the Holy Ghost. Joy is in the Spirit of God. In His, in His presence, there is joy. So I started meditating, and it was amazing how it just changed my mind, my attitude, my spirit. And I, and I just began to feel better when I began to meditate on the fact that God is happy. God is happy today. I want to be in His presence this morning. To, to be in the presence of joy. To be in the presence of happiness. To, I've got, I've, got a, I've got a strange concept for you this morning, for many of you. Because I want you to meditate upon the fact that God will fight for you this morning. God is a fighter. One of the descriptions in the Word of God, it says that He is the Lord of hosts or the Lord of heaven's armies. That means that God goes into battle. And the declaration in my scripture text this morning, Pharaoh was here, the army of the Egyptians was here, there was fear, there was panic, the people didn't know what to do. And what did Moses say? He said, I want you to fear not and stand still. For today God will fight for you, and you can see the salvation of the Lord. All week long, God has been speaking into my spirit to tell His people that He is fighting on your behalf. I don't know what you're facing. I don't know what it looks like this morning. I don't know what you're going through. But I come with a word from the Holy Ghost that God is fighting your battle for you. Somebody say, God will fight for me. In in, in verse 13, Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not. I want you to know it pleases God when you see an enemy bigger and stronger than you, and yet you are absent of fear because you are trusting in Him. It pleases the Lord. When you're looking at a mountain that you don't know how or, or what you're going to do, but yet there's a peace on the inside of you because I'm not looking at my enemy, I'm not looking at the adversity, I'm not looking at the power of my enemy. My focus is on the God that I serve this morning, and He is well able. Somebody say glory. It is hard. Listen to me, it is hard to be absent of fear when you get certain reports, when you hear certain things, when certain things are going on. It's human to have a fear when you don't know what to do. But when you have your faith hooked into the living God, it will bring a peace into you, knowing that God is bigger than what you are going through this morning. I have come with a word for from the Holy Ghost for somebody that God is fighting your battle for you. You're not in this by yourself. It's not the heaven on how strong you are, how smart you are. It's not the heaven on your ability. You've got a God in heaven who is yours. I will fight for you. Please your hands up, please. Please go see the salvation of the Lord. I need to tell somebody, God is ready for the turn of the Lord. I feel God is ready for the turn of the Lord. Oh, I wish you were giving praise on this Sunday morning. You cannot have faith in God and fear of the enemy at the same time. Faith and fear don't coexist. You cannot have faith in God and fear of the enemy at the same time. And I've come to tell somebody, it's time you change your perspective. You've been looking at the giant too long. You've been looking at the power of the enemy too long. It's time to change your perspective and begin to gaze upon the Lord and be reminded who He is. He's 
never lost the battle. He's never lost the battle. He, the, he has never lost the battle. No, he has never lost the battle. So I never went into the house. He has never lost the battle. Some of you are here this morning because God has never lost the battle. You're not here to get the battle and get your this and get your that. No, I can't come in here. God has never lost the battle. The psalmist said, Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. Magnify the Lord. That means make him bigger in your own eyes. You can't make God any bigger than he is. But he said it's time that you quit looking at the enemy. Quit looking at what you're going through. Quit looking at the impossible, impossibilities. And begin to magnify the Lord in your heart. Begin to lift the Lord that's in your body. Begin to lift the Lord that's in your spirit. So if you begin to lift God up, there's going to come a spirit of faith. We're going to have a spirit of confidence. Why? Because I know God is bigger than anything I'm going through. He's bigger than anything you're facing. I need somebody to say to get that praise on that. I need somebody to get that praise on that. Do you believe this morning he's bigger? He's bigger than the doctor's report. Do you believe he's bigger than the storm you're in? No, I can't get no help this morning. Do you believe that God is bigger than what you are facing this morning? Well, then you ought to praise him. You ought to praise him. You ought to shout his name. He said, oh, magnify the Lord. That would do some of us so good this morning. To begin the back. Because you, you spend most of your time talking the problem. You spend most of your time talking what's wrong. Why don't you take, let's do a reset this morning and start magnifying the Lord. Because He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. What does that mean? What He did yesterday, He will do today. There's not a fire too big. There's not a devil too big. There's not a storm too powerful. And it's when I think about the Lord and who He is, my soul cries out, Hallelujah! Because my God has never left the Bible. Watch what the psalmist said. Watch, 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 watch. He said, Let us exalt His name together. I sought the Lord, and He heard me. And he delivered me from all my fears. You are in a safe spot this morning in his presence. You have got the antidote. You've got the answer. You're secure this morning. Get away from the spirit of fear. Let God's peace come. Let God's joy come. Let God's confidence come. You are in a safe spot this morning. How many of you will help magnify the Lord with me for a moment? I want to declare what God's bigger than. Are you ready? I'll start it. He is bigger than the doctor's report. Somebody help me. What's God bigger? What's, what is he bigger than? He's bigger than all my fears. Bigger than any anger, spirit of anger that has not come upon me. He's bigger than my death. I'm coming from him. He's bigger than cancer. Somebody help me. He's bigger than, he's bigger than my addiction. He's bigger than any enemy. Help me back to the Lord this morning. He's bigger than, no matter what I'm going to do today, the Lord God is bigger. Somebody needs to magnify the Lord. I don't 
What are you going through this morning? He's bigger than that. What are you going to listen? You can't have a testimony without a test. He's going to listen. He didn't speak this to the children of Israel. Whatever they was good, no. The enemy was breathing down the neck down the back. And he said, you see that enemy? He said, hear not. And today you shall see the salvation of the Lord. I God shall fight for you. He's got you in a situation, not that you'll see the enemy, but you'll see how big God is. I know some of you have been back for a minute, but I'm telling you, God's bigger than all of us. I think God's bigger than all of us. Isaiah 6.1, in the year that King Josiah died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon the throne. And lift it up. And his train filled the temple. Stay with me. His train. I don't know if I'm you. I do I looked it up. I've heard it before. I wanted to make sure it's right. The train is the long garment that flows behind the king. Every time a king would conquer another king, he would cut off his train and sew it on the back of his train. The, the more the king conquers, the longer his train is. And the Bible said that when I seen the Lord, his train filled the temple. Because he has conquered king, he conquered fear, he conquered the kingdom. And you see the Lord high lifted up. His train fills the temple because he's the God that's victorious. He's the God that fights for his people. And he never falls in the battle. He never falls. If you don't want to have to do it, if you don't want to have to do it, then you need to be free. My God never leaves us. He's never lost the battle. He's never lost the battle. He's never lost the battle. Step on the schedule. You may be seated. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry for Holly. I'm sorry for Holly. I'm trying to calm down. I'm trying to calm down. The Bible is trying to tell you that God will fight for you. He fights for his people. I don't know what you're going through. The Holy Ghost told me to tell you that God's fight on your behalf. Well, it don't look like it. It don't feel like it. He ain't through yet. You're still living. You're still breathing. God's not finished yet. He said, Pastor, I'm in a den of lies. That's all right. You're still living. You're going to survive it. God's going to give you a pastor. Somebody said, Lord. I'm not saying like I feel it. I'm going to get in trouble here because I'm going to get off, the, I'm going to get off my notes. But some people are such weak people because the moment they get into any kind of issue, they just go up, go in the town, and give up on God. And don't you understand that He leads you into the battle that you can see that He's the Lord of the battle. Sent you in the storms that's bigger than you. So why would God do that? So you would look up and realize you need Him. And when He brings you out, you're not going to be doing a milk bucket. You're going to be knocked upon the head. Look what the Lord has done. You're in something over your head. Remember, it's not over his head. And he's not through. Holy oh, Ghost, put that in somebody's spirit right now. That's been fighting a battle for a minute. Put it in those spirits. 
when they feel like the water's over their head, but remind them right now, it's not over your head. <laughs> Hallelujah. They may feel like they're thinking, but they have never thought. Oh, Lord. Deuteronomy 3.22. Ye shall not fear them, for the Lord your God, He shall fight for you. Deuteronomy 24, for the Lord your God is He that goes with you to fight for you against your enemies to save you. I'm not going to win this. So shall they fear the name of the Lord, talking about your enemies, from the west, and His glory from the rising of the sun. When the enemy shall come in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard and fix him. I'm going to thank you very much. Watch Bible on your behalf. Can I get a witness? John 10 and 11. I'm going to hurt. He says, I am the good shepherd, and the good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. The iron is not the shepherd, whose own, who, whose own the sheep are not, seeing the wolf cometh and leave the sheep and flee it. And the wolf takes of them and scatters the sheep. God said, I'm the good shepherd. And when the wolf comes in, I'm going to fight that wolf. He's not going to attack you. He's not going to have the power over you. Telling you on this Sunday morning that God will fight for you. God will fight for you. Don't get stuck in the battles that belong to the Lord. And I heard God just mouthing, mouthing, telling lies and poor boy. Make you want to get in the flesh quick. Don't do it. Hello. I mean, I feel with the Holy Ghost, I don't feel that much though. I'm just going to go home. Make you want to get in the flesh. And I would tell my wife, and, and she can vouch for this, that if, God, if God's not angry about it, then why should I be? I was determined to let. I'm going to fight this battle. And I thought the moment God gets tired of it, He'll deal with it. Some of you need to get in the position, keep your mouth shut, keep your place going, and let God fight this battle. I need God's favor in my life more than I need to win this battle. And then I want to keep my spirit right. I want to stay in a position where God will break the battle. Because if He can do more in a moment than I can ever do, I can go be God. Go on, say amen. Let me, let me tell you very quickly and give you a couple of seconds. When, when the Egyptians were coming out to the people in the Red Sea to buy the Bible said that that the Lord looked upon the hosts of the Egyptians to the point the Lord looked upon the hosts of the Egyptians to the point of fire and the cloud. And God troubled the enemies. And he took off their chariot wheels that they dragged, dragged them heavy. So that the Egyptians said, Let us flee from the face of Israel, for the Lord fighteth against the Egyptians. I want you to hear this. They're coming after the people of God. And what does God do? He ties their shoes together, He takes off the chariot wheels. He took away the enemy's power. Now, I'm telling you this morning, God can take away your enemy's power. I don't care how powerful they are. I don't care what it looks like. Now, I don't know how you feel about this. I don't think no man is in control. I believe my God is in control. Let me just say, let me just say, let me just say. He will hide you from your enemies. For they can't find you. Remember Lot and Solomon and Gomorrah and, and those men were trying to get in the house. The Bible said, God blinded the eyes of the men. Where they wearied themselves 
to find the door. God will blind the eyes of your enemies so they cannot find you, cannot catch you. I've come with a magic burden. They're not burdens on your neck, but God is fighting for you. Come on, if you're going to be free, give me the start of praise. Come on, give God a start of praise. David was in a bad position. He was in a battle and he went back to speak loud. And the enemy had come in and taken everything. Watch this. Move. Taken everything. And the Bible said that the people spoke of stoning David. They're going to kill David. Because all the people were grieved. For every man's son and his daughter and his wife, everything was gone. And the Bible said that David encouraged himself in the Lord. In a horrible position, lost everything. Everybody was against him. But David encouraged himself in the Lord. Pull up here, please. There's people in here this morning. That you're in a bad situation. You don't know what you're going to do. The storm is raging. It's dark as midnight in your life. But I'll come with the word. You need to encourage yourself in the Lord. Be reminded today that God is fighting your battle. Be reminded today that God has stopped this. Be reminded today it's going to be okay. Encourage yourself in the Lord this morning. Magnify the Lord this morning. You're busting and dusting and slamming doors and throwing hammers. It ain't going to fix anything. But if you'll stand still for a moment and you'll begin to magnify the Lord, encourage yourself in the Lord. Encourage yourself in the Lord. Nobody needs to encourage themselves in the Lord. Somebody needs to encourage themselves in the Lord. Lift your hands. Lift your heart. Lift your voice. Begin to encourage your strength in the Lord. All week long, you've been speaking the problem. All week long, you've been talking about the problem. It's time to stop it right now and encourage yourself in the Lord. It's time to make the problem up. Somebody stand to your feet with me this morning. Sometimes the people that God is trying to reach, the hardest is the hardest people to reach. I had a little bird that stuck in my garage. I had the garage door open. A little bird flew in there. I did everything to try to get that little bird out. That thing was flapping its wings. It was flying back into the window. It was flying into the wall. And all I was trying to do was get it to a place of safety, to a place of freedom. Now, I know for a fact that there's people in here that you've been going through there. And you've been fighting an enemy. And the devil's told you that it's going to be like this. But I tell you, the best thing you can do right now is encourage yourself in the Lord. And if you can make it to the God, then you can lift your praise for it. I can't do that praise. They're going to make it to the Lord. who need to encourage themselves in the Lord. I'm waiting on those who need to lift their praise to the Lord. Amen. You've got two choices. You can go out the same way you came in, or you can take this word. It's a way to do the devil. I'm going to make the devil the Lord. I'm going to encourage myself in the Lord. Take 30 
seconds and begin to lift your praise to the Lord. Come on, begin to lift your praise to the Lord. Come on, Brother Cam and, and, and Jeremy and Regina and Zach. Come on up here for a moment. Begin to lift your praise to the Lord, church. Begin to lift your praise to the Lord. <laughs> 